Hey gang, it's Ron from itmaskey.com and my job is to help each and every one of you guys get certified. So I want to help you pass A+. So all today's video, or if you listen on the podcast, all today's audio is going to be about is pretty much some practice tests, right? Some practice questions that I came up with to help you guys get a better grip, a better grasp on some IT stuff. Now, are these going to be exactly like the questions that are on A plus? No, um, to be honest, the questions on A plus are probably going to be significantly harder, right? This is just to give you guys some base knowledge. So basically, if I go through these questions and you suck, that means that A plus may be a little bit too much for you. You may want to think about taking some other stuff before you take A plus. Are you ready? Fantastic. So first things first, what does RAID stand for in the context of computer storage? Does it stand for redundant array of independent disk, random access and integrated disk, remote access and integrated disk, redundant access and integrated drive? RAID stands for redundant array of independent disk. So that's how this is going to go. I'm going to ask the question and give you the answer. Now it's up to you to get further context and understand it when it comes to the answers. So this is just going to be some quick fire stuff to see where you are, right? So this is going to be a barometer to know if um, this is where you need to start at. Which of the following is the correct order of the boot process in a typical PC? Let me rephrase that. Is this the correct order of the boot process in a typical PC? BIOS, UEFI, operating system, boot order. Is that the correct order in the boot process in a typical PC. Now, on a typical PC, the boot order is BIOS, UEFI, POS, bootloader, and then the operating system will come up. What type of cable is typically used to connect a PC to a wired Ethernet network? HDMI, VGA, USB, RJ45. You guys already know, it is a RJ45. What is the purpose of an anti-static wrist strap? To protect against malware, to prevent electrostatic discharge, and prevent damage to the computers, to improve Wi-Fi signal strength, or to clean computer screens. You already know that the anti-wrist strap or anti-static wrist strap is to prevent ESD. Which of the following is an example of a volatile memory? Hard disk drive, solid state drive, USB flash drive or RAM. RAM is volatile memory. What is the maximum transfer speed of USB 3.0? The answer is five gigabits, five gigabits per second so if you're enjoying this so far make sure that you review this podcast episode if you're listening to the podcast if you're listening on anything else or watching anything else like it so the algorithm sees this and it starts to show this stuff to other people so i have the motivation to continue to keep doing this shit. next question what is the purpose of a ups to protect against malware, to provide backup power during a power outage, 
to clean up computer screens or to improve Wi-Fi signal strength. The purpose of an UPS is to provide backup power during a power outage. So if you haven't done so, like I just requested, make sure you like this stuff. Leave me a comment on what other certification that you would like for me to give you guys some tutelage on as well. Next question. Which of the following is the correct type of RAM used in most modern desktop computers? DDR2, DDR3, DDR4, DDR5. Most modern computers are using DDR4. Which of the following is the process of converting an IP address to a MAC address? ARP, DNS, DHCP, FTP. The answer to that is ARP or ARP. If a customer reports that their computer is not displaying any video on the monitor, which of the following could be the cause of the issue? Faulty power supply, faulty CPU, faulty RAM, faulty graphics card. Now, most likely, it's going to be a faulty graphics card. User wants to connect a laptop to an external monitor. Which of the following ports would be the best option to use? HDMI, VGA, USB, DVI. If you want the highest resolution, the best quality, you would use HDMI. Which of the following, or what is the correct sequence of steps to install a new CPU in a desktop computer? Are these following directions the correct sequence of steps to install a CPU? Apply thermal place, insert CPU, attach heatsink, connect power cables. That is not the right way. You have to attach the heatsink, apply the thermal paste, insert the CPU, then connect the power supply cables. Next up, which of the following is a type of malware that is designed to block access to a computer system until a ransom is paid? This one is damn near giving you the answer. Ransomware does that. Ransomware is responsible for that. So if you're enjoying this and you're looking to get some actual training, I'm the founder of a program called the Zero to IT Hero program where students are getting the hottest certifications in the industry in 90 days. So if you're interested in starting a tech career and getting certified in 90 days, go over to itmasterkey.com and apply to the program. We have a full pace, self-paced program where you just do everything on your own. Or if you want mentorship, if you want guidance, if you want live classes, if you want the whole shebang bang we have the Zero Tide to Hero program where we literally help you every step of the way to get certified and get into tech. ITmasterkey.com. Everything in the description or hopefully I articulated what I just uh, Annunciate, no, what is the yeah, annunciate? What I did to annunciate, and you understand what the website is. Okay, let's get back into this test. What is the maximum data transfer rate of USB 3.0? Did I already, did we already go through this one? I feel like we did. Let me go through. Okay, this is this is good. This is good. So, this is kind of like a, a question that we already asked, but it's a little bit of a twist. Which of the following is a type of RAM that stores data without needing to be refreshed? DDR2, DDR3, DDR4, or DDR5? 
Same answer as the last time. DDR4 doesn't need to get refreshed. Which of the following expansion slots is typically used for graphics cards? PCIe, AGP, PCI, ISA. It is PCIe, okay? Which of the following protocols is commonly used for email retrieval? SMTP, POP3, FTP, SNMP. POP3 is commonly used for that. What is the purpose of a MAC address? To identify a device on a local area network, to route data across the internet, to encrypt data for secure transmission, to assign an IP address to a device. A MAC address is used to identify a device on a local area network. Which of the following is an example of a classic, excuse me, which of the following is an example of a class C IP address? 10.0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0 .0. Dot zero dot zero one seventy two dot sixteen dot zero dot zero one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot zero dot zero one sixty nine dot two five four dot zero dot zero example of a class C IP address be one nine two one six eight dot zero dot zero which of the following tools would you use to test the continuity of a network cable? Multimeter, a cable tester, a loopback plug, or a toner probe. You would use a cable tester. Which of the following file systems is commonly used in Windows operating systems? NTFS, HFS Plus, EXT4, FAT, 32. NTFS is commonly used in Windows operating systems. So how are you guys doing? Are you getting most of those right? Are you feeling pretty good? Great. I'll say this. If you got most of those right, that still doesn't mean that you're ready to take the A+. The students in my program, no matter where they're at, they don't start with A+. They start with um, another foundational certification to get them geared up and get them ready for the A plus and just for career in IT in general. So, like I said before, if you're looking to get certified, you can head over to itmsq.com. Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the reviews what you're looking for. For one, let me get a five star, please. And also, um, what other exams would you like me to break down? give you tutelage on so on and so forth. And also the A plus, right? The A plus, if you don't know, is a two part exam. You have to pass both parts of the exam to be fully A plus certified. You gotta pass the first part and the second part. It doesn't matter which part you take first. My students usually take the first part first, which will be core one, but you can take core two first if you feel more comfortable. As long as you pass both, you have A plus. Another question that comes up, how long should it take? I have no idea. For the Zero to IT Hero program, it takes those students about 30 days to get A+. Plus. For you, doing it willy-nilly, I'm not sure how long it's going to take. But good luck. Let me get that five-star review. And other than that, I'll see you in the next one.